This meeting to order. This is general government concerning business licensing. Roll call, please. Councilmember Dennehy? Absent. Councilmember Schmisher? Here. Councilmember B. Smith? Here. Councilmember Stein? Here. Councilmember Tracy? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Hamrick? Absent. Mayor Smith? Here. All right, I think we'll just go ahead and turn the time over to you, Rick, if that's all right. That's all right. I'm prepared. At least right now, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a little a, a step back in time a little bit to to review the status of this. When uh, we talked about having this on this agenda, we went back and thought, well, what happened the last time we talked about it? Because it's been a while, and um, I'll get into a little bit more of that in a minute. But we're gonna take a little bit of a look uh, back in time. So we're looking at the the general business licensing discussion that we began last October. This began last October in a general government discussion. Uh, council requested discussions with business owners, which we did. Uh, we did that in December, uh, a week before the general government meeting, the next one which was on December 8th. At that point it was on the docket on the agenda with the UTV discussion, and that took about 55 minutes of that hour and we had about five minutes on business licensing, which we really didn't cover anything. So um, Ryan suggested that council hold off on it until 2022. We met again as a staff in, in March, March 17th, uh, to somewhat prepare for this, but to recap where we were and have more discussion internally about how this could work for us. Now back in December, back in uh, actually November, I put together a request for a listening session that was on December 2nd. We invited 33 local business owners, property owners, real estate agents, uh, bankers, police, fire. We ended up with 10 people that arrived for the meeting in person, which quite honestly is pretty good turnout. Um, that included another three or four of us from the staff, and that would be Chief Schick, uh, Christy Gotham, our public information officer, Brandy uh, Sheets, our grant writer, and myself. <coughs> this is the list of attendees. The attendees are in black on top, goes from Mike Butts down to Debbie Lake, and then those in purple, purple gave me their comments in private. They didn't attend the meeting. Uh, so we had a round, pretty, pretty good mix. Uh, we didn't quite get the mix we wanted. I did miss somebody on here, actually, and that's Scott Thorson. Um, from the banking side of things. But we had commercial real estate covered pretty well. And uh, a downtown business owner, we had Debbie Lake from Classic Furniture. She's also, she also represents the Downtown Business Alliance. So she has a pretty good handle on all the, the businesses downtown. I got comments from Rob Brown at FEDC, Scott Ekstrom, uh, Pam Simmons of Kaleidoscope, and Rich Millard from the Chamber. And this is what I shared with them. Um, the concern at the time was the city's doing this, and we don't like it. And I, and I shared this with them that, no, the city's not doing this the way it's written right now. We're, we've gone through an evaluation of our antiquated um, business licensing, created a draft, we've reviewed it, and now we're in a listening session, and we're going to keep this cycle going until it's determined what the final draft will be and then passage by council. So we are in this review and listen cycle right now uh, to determine what the next iteration will be of this. My proposal to them was this is why licensing is a good thing. It provides a lot of consistency. Cindy gets a lot of calls from businesses who want to know if there's licensing involved, some yes, some no. It would simplify things if all business com businesses coming to the community knew that they would have to have a business license. It creates a consistent method for everybody. Uh, it assists in creating an inventory of industries and business types to aid in industry evaluation and targeted recruitment. This is a big one for me. As we try to determine what, what types of industries to attract, it's, it's nice to know what's here 
and what's interested in coming here so we can work around those industries and determine what might be a good fit for that industry. Or maybe, um, as we'll get down into a little bit later on, a good location for that business or that industry. The better management of the ex better manage the expectations of new businesses and those interested in expansion. That's another one that's big for me. I come from the private industry where you have to manage people's expectations all the time, and you have to be able to manage the expectations of people that are sophisticated and people that are not, customers <coughs> of all types. Um, I think it's very important that we as a community manage the expectations of businesses coming in so they know exactly not just what to expect but how to navigate through the system. Uh, provide a consistent starting point for businesses in the community. I think that's, that's kind of a no-brainer. We've got people coming in, businesses coming in, they're contacting me, they're contacting Patrick, they're contacting our building official, they're contacting Cindy. There's just many different areas, many different ways that they contact us. If we had one consistent way of doing that, that would simplify things. Uh, provide a customer-oriented approach to business planning and growth. Like we hear that all the time. Um, I hear a lot in the community, not as much as I used to, but I hear a lot about how difficult it is to work with the city. Some of that is very customer orient is, is instilling a customer orientation that probably needs to be improved in some respects. And, and I think anything in terms of doing any position in terms of a customer orientation is a good thing to do. And then create means of communication with all businesses to promote grants, programs, training, assistance. That became a big deal during COVID when we now wanted to find the businesses and get them grants that they needed to succeed and to, to, get, to stay open in some, some respects. <coughs> what I didn't talk about in here that we'll get into in a minute is public safety. In our meeting, we talked about Chapter 5.02, which is licensing procedures, which affects, for the most part, all of the different licenses we have. And then 504, which is the new general business licensing section. And this is the reaction. Um, as, as you know, our community does not like regulations. Our businesses don't like government a lot of, in, the, in a lot of cases. And the initial reaction was <coughs> negative, in fact, very negative. As we continued our conversation, as we continued to, to discuss with the different people in the room, the different benefits and drawbacks of this, there was a good general consensus that the data that could come from this could be very, very useful and very beneficial to the community. It's just really, how do we wanna do that? Primarily in terms of public safety, and then the other in terms of helping transform the community into a business-friendly community. How do we get businesses through the hoops of starting a business? Those hoops exist everywhere. It's not just Canyon City. But how can we as a community <coughs> help them through um, with, much, with far fewer headaches, I guess you could say. The positives that came out of this, and, uh, and not all of these were mine. These, these came from, from the group. Managing expectations, that's one of my big things. I mentioned that. And, and those people in the room also understand managing expectations, and they see the benefits of that. The ombudsman concept is something that's been talked about a little bit outside of the city. That's more of an economic development discussion that's happened. Um, and that was brought up at this meeting as well. There needs to be some way to basically hold the hand of people coming to the community through the processes of creating a business. <clears throat> and their thinking was not just Canyon City. There's also issues periodically with Fremont County. There's also issues periodic periodically with Florence. You could argue about why there are issues and why, why some cases there are not. Um, but if there was a consistent way of helping people through the different community processes, that would be a very good thing. You still need the data. You still need the ability to find out who these people are. But this could be a system that goes hand in hand with that. Another positive is inventory. Um, particularly, particularly from an economic development perspective, when you're trying to determine what's needed in a community, and this is me, this is Rob Brown, this is, this is the realtors in the area because they're operating as economic developers in a lot of respects. It's good to know what types of businesses and industries are here and what types of indus industries and businesses we need 
so we can help at least target some businesses or, like I said before, if we know we've got a preponderance of these types of businesses, <coughs> we can go search for comparable businesses or, or compatible businesses or industries. Uh, public safety was one that's huge, and, and I know Chief Schick was involved with these conversations early on. Right now, and I, I got a, a comment from the fire, fire district as well, uh, the police and fire have no way of knowing who's in where right now. And if they have an emergency at a building and they have no access to the building and they don't know who owns the building, they have no way to get in the building, that becomes a serious issue or can become a serious issue. So having a database of, of these businesses, having knowledge of that, and getting them information about businesses coming to the community would be very beneficial from a public safety perspective. <clears throat> and then who's moving in? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead this one off by saying that nobody wants regulation until it benefits them, I guess, if you think about that. Who's moving in is really a way of determining who's moving into the neighborhood in order to determine if they're a good fit for either the zoning in that neighborhood or that, that block or the neighboring businesses in the block. Um, that came up from one of the business owners who has a business near him right now that he doesn't consider a good match for his, his business. Um, that's, that's something that's being handled under different departments right now, I guess you could say. Uh, and that also brings up the question of confidentiality. You know, when we're talking, as, at least from an economic development perspective, when we're talking to developers, we keep a lot of their information private. And that's for, that's for very, very good reasons. If we have somebody moving into a neighborhood that we know is zoned correctly for that neighborhood, do we have a right to share that information? Do we want to share that information with neighboring businesses and potentially jeopardize a, 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 a good relationship or property values or something like that? So there's questions with that one. On the negative side, the very first thing asked of me, why, what's the motivation? Is the city just trying to get more money? Where there was no real discussion about license fees at the time, but the first response to me was, is the city just looking for more money? So it took a little backpedaling on that to, to explain what the other positives behind it. Another one, it's already too hard to start a business in Canyon City, requiring this is adding salt to a wound. Um, <clears throat> we all hear it. We all hear how difficult it is to start a business in Canyon City. We all know that we have very successful operations coming to town that are not having issues with the city. So there are different reasons potentially for the different struggles that businesses are having. But we also know that word of mouth last for a very, very long time that people have very long memories in this community. Um, so it's very underst understandable that that comment would come. Too punitive, um, whenever you have licensing, there's regulations involved, there's, there's consequences involved. If you don't have your license, they did not like the thought of having consequences if, you know, one more thing to worry about if they, if they had a license and they forgot to renew or they didn't renew. Um, another one is how do you define the cause of that cease and desist or the penalty if it's not defined? Who's gonna defer, determine that cause and what is that cause? Uh, winners and losers, this one I didn't expect. Um, city should not be in, a, in, a, in the business of picking winners and losers. I didn't see it that way. I didn't see this that way at all. But when you, when you think about it in terms of the comments that were made and the, the angle taken on this comment, you can kind of see that leaves an opening potentially in the future, maybe not now, but in future, um, future city clerks or who is the licensing authority or or future councils to make decisions about businesses that could pick winners and losers. Uh, define business. We talked about that a little bit the last time. That was a, something that I brought up. It, it, the big question mark is how do you handle building owners? Are they businesses, <coughs> you know? 
Uh, and there's a, there's a potential solution to that that, we, that I recommended the meeting that I bring up in this as well. Another negative is that it's just another roadblock, more government red tape. And I kept the, co the COVID-19 one in here. D I didn't think it necessarily applied, but there is still some that applies. Utilities and overhead are rising. Costs are rising considerably. Is this the right time to do this? You know, I, and that came up more than once in the meeting. Is this the right time, considering where Canyon City is on being a business-friendly community, um, costs of, of, infra costs of, 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 of development, difficulties finding employees, difficulties, the, all the difficulties that businesses are having these days, is this the right time? Some alternatives, we did not just sit there and complain about this, we came up with different ideas. It was a really good cross section of people that were, for the most part, mixed on it. Um, the most vocal, obviously, um, are gonna speak out as much as they possibly can, but reason came into it as well. And um, some of the other possibilities, can we just create a business directory instead? We can talk more about that. We talked about that in the last meeting we had as a staff. There's some pluses to that and there's some minuses to that. Um, if something is not mandatory, how do you know who's really around? You know, How do you make it mandatory? How do you make it mandatory if there's no consequences? So that's, that's the biggest, the most popular suggestion was more of a business directory. Uh, can we create a voluntary registry? That's very close to creating a business directory. Can we get the information from the Colorado uh, Secretary of State's office? We could, but that's gonna include every single property owner that has, we've got property owners here that have 10 different properties under 10 different LLCs, and it's just property sitting out, not doing anything. So redefining potentially business owner is another, or business is another one. Again, another suggestion, and, and bring back the ombudsman concept, that's a little bit more of a complicated thing. You still need the data to support it, to, to the ability to get the ombudsman the information they need. But if you create a trusted official, so to speak, uh, it may make it easier for businesses to come to the pers prospective businesses to come to that ombudsman to figure out where to, where to go through. Now the ombudsman can't be a politically driven person and hopefully would not have a preference for one community over another. Um, within the city of Canyon City, that would be me. <coughs> so I don't have a preference for Canyon over Florence. I will always choose Canyon over Florence. It's not a preference, it's just it's the right way, I guess. <laughs> and then redefine business. And I'll, I'll get into that here in, another, in, a, in the next slide. As we define business in the, in the uh, licensing document now, any kind of vocation, occupation, profession, enterprise, I don't need to read this, you can read it, but it's, a, it's somewhat limiting and it's somewhat wide open at the same time because it includes anybody that it implies anybody that has an LLC. I have one, I don't have a business. Uh, it implies that anybody's gonna have to have a business and, or be a business and register it. This one was taken from, I believe it's Aurora. I'm pretty sure it's Aurora. But they define business much more, much more loosely, but they, they define engaged in business. And when they define engaged in business, they exclude, specifically exclude, persons who own commercial or residential property offered for lease or rent who do not have one or more employees. So if you think about the buildings downtown now, if you've got a vacancy downtown, one building that's completely vacant, you won't have a business in there. So a business license, if we exclude these types of owners, that would not be identifiable, that identifiable as a business until a lease is signed and a business occupies, then that business would get the business license. So that's, it's not a foolproof system, but I'd say 99% of the time it's gonna eliminate the business, the building owners who really don't have 
a body in the facility, I guess you could say. They're just leasing their space to businesses who are registered. Some of the comments, um, like I said, for the most part, the comments I listed here are negative. There's one positive. I would say the general discussion of this meeting was, was probably not quite swayed this much negative. The one positive one is it would be nice if there was some way of knowing what kind of business is moving in next door to know if it's compatible with zoning or other businesses in the area. And I say compatible with zoning because I've, I've talked to business owners downtown who if they realize that a business is doing something that is not meeting the proper zone requirements and they have to meet the proper zone requirements, they're going to want an answer for that. Um, and that, that actually came up last year and it's been taken care of. But local businesses who are in the community want to know that the other businesses are following the same rules they are. Um, one of the early comments is it's a pretty ominous document. Uh, and that was really kind of echoed by more than one of them. It's an ominous document because it's a legal document. It's not business friendly. It's not written in a friendly uh, customer service oriented manner. It should be friendly pro-business tone. Uh, and the, the, the reference to what could happen in the future, the bottom one, it may not be intended to be used to manipulate businesses into actions that they don't want to take. And this came right after, right during COVID, such as mask wearing. Um, the topic came up that if the city really wanted to, they could put mask wearing as a requirement for, for the license. And if you didn't follow the rules, you could lose your license. Uh, may not be intended in this council. None of the people in the meeting had any concerns about this council, this administration, not one of them. It's really more a matter about the next one or the next city administrator or the next mayor. Um, it kind of opens the door for the possibility of, I don't know, underhandedness, I guess you could say. That was their take. So by and large, um, it was a pretty, not, I don't want to say heated discussion, but people were passionate about their, their thoughts. But it did come to the point where everybody's like, yeah, that would be good information to have. There are many, many cases where that could be very useful information. So it's more a matter of how. I've got now, well, I, as, far as, as far as we are concerned, um, I did try to do another listening session through the chamber. The chamber sent out an email, and this was just recently. Uh, they didn't get any responses, uh, and it was a very busy time, so we'll, we'll try it again if that's the council's desire. I am continuing these conversations. I have, a, I have an economic development roundtable tomorrow, and I'm sure it's going to come up because I invited a couple of them here today. Um, the Chamber of Commerce is generally in favor of it, they like the idea of being able to identify businesses. The challenges I think we would have with this is what information could we share with the Chamber of Commerce? You know, you're dealing with people's information. Um, the fire department has no concerns. They would like to see that um, any, any businesses that come to the community, they and they assume the police department would be given information so they know where they are and that annually that information is updated so that nothing slips through the cracks. And that was some of the other discussion we had as, in staff too, is how does it, how do you know, if, if you're gonna do a voluntary thing, how do you know that people are gonna register the next year? How do you know that this business is no longer operating? And on the, on the flip side, what do you do about the businesses that are operating out of their house, you know, and they move? How do you, how do you know that they moved? How do you know that they, you know, so there's questions uh, from an economic development side, I see a lot of very, very good reasons for it. Um, but I also hear the talk about how difficult it is to work with the community, so I would be hesitant to go this route. It's not my call, um, but there needs to be, I think there needs to be a way for us to identify and better handle businesses coming to the community because I think we lose them and we don't want to lose them. If, if, if they're getting the word from the wrong people, 
um, and they're not being able, not being given the opportunity to learn what it can be to go through the, the process in Canyon City and be a business in Canyon City, uh, then I think we're doing them a disservice. So um, I'm a little torn on it, but I want to be able to help people start a business in this town. So I, in general, I'm in favor of something along these lines. I did include these, these slides. If we want to refer back to them, we can. These are the, the, the items of the bigger concerns. I think you can go through the regulation and probably guess what they are. Um, the authority to deny licensing, suspensions and revocations, cease and desist, penalties and violations. They all agree that these are things that are very applicable to maybe security companies or arms dealers or pawn shops, um, not to call them out, but when it comes to general business, they find this um, a little heavy handed and um, maybe somehow we can come up with a way to soften it, I guess you could say. Quite honestly though, you know, once something is a requirement and they're following through, then it's, then it's nothing to complain about anymore, you know? I don't want to say they wouldn't complain about it, but people will complain until the, until the decision's made and then they'll go with it. So that's, that's gonna be your call, really, on that one. So, Rick, I do have a question. Maybe I missed it, but my binder does not have a copy of the proposed business license. I don't know if it was... That would have been provided last... Yeah, we, we didn't have the business license in there. We wanted to have more of a discussion than getting down into the actual words to make sure that... Oh, we didn't, yeah, we didn't provide it for this meeting. Yeah, make sure we're heading in the right direction. So our last meeting we had on this, the direction was simplify it. Let it meet if, if our intention is to get people's information and to help welcome new businesses in and make sure before they've already invested a lot of money in a building that they already know what their zoning is and what the life safety requirements are. So those are taken care of before, hap you know, before they spend money. So let's address what we need and not with all the heavy handed stuff. So I thought we gave that direction. So well, I'm, I'm assuming it's still the same thing. Well, the, there was some additional direction which was reaching out to the business community as well. So that, that's the part that we're bringing back here is to make sure you know, the direction that was given previously as well as the information that we're providing from the feedback from the businesses that we're still heading in that, that correct direction. The last general government That's meeting on this was to going to be about the, yeah. the, the listening session. It's and hard to give you that direction if I don't have the proposed business license in yeah. hand. And I saw you go through some of the things really quickly. I just looked up Florence's business license. It's online. It is just a few questions and fifty dollars, and there you go. I mean, it accomplishes their needs. Very simple, but I don't have anything to compare that with for this discussion. I think it's good conceptually. <laughs> um, one of the things that occurs to me is the ownership of buildings. I see that almost as separate from business licensing and. If that's information that police and fire don't currently have, then that needs to be solved in some way. And who takes the lead on that, I don't know. I, I just see that as for public safety, as you say. I think that's a, an important issue. But it's um, the same for the business owner, too. If their business with all of their merchandise is on fire, they need to know. Right, you know? yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I, I see both of them as a necessity. I guess I just see them a little bit separate. But yeah, I, I, I think business licensing <coughs> makes sense for all the reasons that you mentioned, Rick, whether it's inventory or you know, all of those other things. And I also think it's important to not make it difficult or onerous for businesses. And part of that may be, you know, what, what is the fee? what do we decide the fee needs to be. I, I think it makes sense to kind of see what other communities are doing, keep it on the low side, unless we really have some reason to not have it low. Um, but it, it makes sense to me to do something along the lines of licensing. I, I don't know, you showed quickly the, the sections can, about penalties and so forth. We can forth. go back I'm to that I'm not really if you want sure to. what that needs to look like. Clearly, we need a process for being able to have people renew every year. 
and being able to track if we don't hear from somebody, track down, you know, did they just leave or go out of business or whatever. But conceptually, that's where I am, at least partly. Council Member Schmisher. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thanks so much for conducting the listening session and, and getting that kind of understanding from business owners about what they think of it. Um, and for, for presenting it so comprehensively to us. I remain very, very, very concerned about it. And it sounds like the business owners in Canyon City, while they see some benefits to having the information compiled and to having that education about the one focal point in the city that people should go to, and the education about how to, how to be more business friendly to folks who are coming here so that they get that information and have the information to make decisions, like having a, a punitive licensing regime is just more red tape and it doesn't sound like they are in favor of it. And it sounds like the benefits that both you've outlined, um, Director Harmon, as well as what the, the businesses have outlined, you don't actually need a business license for that. You could accomplish that through a business directory, through education about Rick is the person that you go to if you need information about how to start a business here. Um, I think that if there is that kind of advantage to them that they will participate if it's not advantageous to them and if they don't see that benefit then they won't so I guess uh, yes if it's voluntary I can see how some people may not but if it is a beneficial thing to businesses then they would want to participate in it um, I do understand about the consistency and if there are kind of 12 different types of businesses now that need to be licensed and it's really hard to understand which ones do and which ones don't Maybe streamlining and simplifying that process would make sense, would make the city clerk's life easier. But I just, I think the idea of a blanket, I forget how many pages it was, but maybe like 50 page document with all of these, the city gets to decide whether or not you can start a business. The city gets to decide whether or not your business will be terminated. I'm, I'm very, very much opposed to that. I'm also a little bit concerned about the idea that you would need a business license in order to um, uh, effectuate action on a zoning issue. I mean, we have city codes, and if there's a zoning violation, then presumably we could use the UDC uh, to address that. Well, what Thanks. happens is it's just like, surprise, there's a new business right there. Nobody had any idea whatsoever it was right. gonna, coming, and it's too late. It's right. like they pop up all of a sudden, yeah. and um, they're doing something that doesn't fit with the zoning for Main Street. And then they'll be like, this is not business friendly. Yeah. Like, well, we would have known up front, if, and if it's just like, we, I mean, we've been saying, here's, here's Rick, here's Rick, here's Rick. I mean, we've been doing that, and there's still lots of surprises popping up, and it makes some of the neighbors upset, too. And right. It's not zoned right, or they didn't even build accordingly. They had to follow the rules, but all of a sudden, some surprise person comes in, and they didn't have to follow the rules. Yeah, well, that, so. the irony there is that I'm, I've talked to business owners that Ask me about a business going, in, and I don't, and I hadn't heard anything about it. And they say you're supposed to know. <laughs> like, well, how am I going to know? It's a private transaction. You know, it's it's not necessarily anything that has to happen through us. It's just a private lease between a business owner and an owner. You know, a building owner. Yeah. And I don't um, think the business licensing is to be like, um, yeah, you can do this, or no, you can't do it. It's more like, okay, just want to make sure that you that is you're in the right zone, and if there's a life and safety, like if based on what kind of business you're doing you might need to have, you know, fire that, sprinklers. So they yeah. know whatever it is, they can do it. They just have to do it within the parameters of the existing code. Which is the intent. It's not the, yeah. yay or nay. It's just this is this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. to and, Mayor, and, there's a couple of things, too, that I can answer because I, I deal with them all now. Currently, the only punif punitive damages we have <laughs> is if they're late, they pay a late fee. That's it. That's really all we have done. Even when I go and find, and there's a lot of businesses that don't get them, and some of them we have to have insurance and stuff on because of the nature, and so I'll go up to them and kindly tell them that they need to get that all taken care of so we're all set. And really, that's the only kind of thing that we have done at this point. I get calls 10 times a week, do we need a business license? Because in almost every other community, they have they a general business license. And so they expect it, and they expect to be able to get those things from it that they get you know, help and they, we know who they are and we would advertise, you know, a list of all the license or all the businesses that are currently licensed in the city. We don't have those kind of lists. So I, you know, people will call me and say, Hey, do you know, blah, 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 blah. If you have this in your town, nope, I can Google, but that's as good as I'm going to get. And sometimes they don't always equate out. Um, I did a, on our clerk list serve, I did ask them who all does licenses. What type of licenses do you do? We came up with almost 70% of the cities 
our size or around our size have business license. Just a general one. Just It's just a general. 20, most of them were $25, I think, a year for a renewal, $50 for a new, and it was just a general one-page business license. Super simple, not real involved, just so that your community knows the businesses that are around there. And then some were different between whether it was brick and mortar or if it was home businesses also. That varied on some of the cities because of the type of cities like you know, a, a city like Breckenridge is going to have diff a little bit different on that than smaller town that you kind of know some of that stuff. So, um, but that was, we did a little bit of research out on that side of it when I first started because I knew that I was a little, you know, I kept saying, everybody keeps asking these questions I can't give them answers to. And um, we also have some licenses that just needed to be revamped because they ask for things that we currently don't do. So we need to get our, our, rules to go with what we're doing. We tried to simplify really everything as much as we can. I was like, nope, let's not do, we don't do this. Let's take all these things out. So we've been really trying to simplify anyway, because I don't like paperwork. And, um, but it, it truly is something that I get asked all the time. And they are shocked. They're like, well, but then what do you mean you don't? How do we, how, how do you know we're here? <laughs> well, we don't. <laughs> you know. yeah, so there's an element of not being business friendly on that. On that side too, yeah. yes. So go, you know, going back to the idea of the ombudsman, and it sounded like most of the businesses that participated want that type of um, person or you know, that, that functionality within the city, and Rick does play that role, but if there's nothing that funnels him in, funnels people into Rick, that, that's where we run into these issues. And Rick mentioned an issue with a, a business last year where you know, we, we have people who spent their retirement money to open a business and uh, they, they didn't meet the requirements for the zoning. They didn't, meet, you know, they didn't meet the building requirements for safety. Are we talking about highly combustible items within yes. close proximity to a tasting room? Like <laughs> Yes, we yes. are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, it's kind of serious. And, and, you know, we we get wind of it at the at the 11th hour, and we, you know, again, trying to be business friendly, trying to find solutions for them, but ultimately, you know, they were too far down the path, and they, they had made too many decisions that we couldn't help them, um, and they, they ended up not opening in that location. They, we tried to find additional locations where they could open, they didn't open in those locations, and I think they tried to go to another community after that. Uh, so, so, I mean, so there's still a black eye. It was a black eye for us still. That's correct. Yeah. I think um, Councilmember Smith. Uh, I just had I just some general thoughts, and then I had a question for Rick. But I mean, as a business owner, um, and in my industry, you have to have not only a license to perform, but you also have to be registered with DORA, Department of Regulatory Agencies. And so we're, our industry is no, like we're, we're, we know regulations, we know licensing. It's, it's, for us, it's not a big deal, but I understand businesses like uh, just a straight up retail who they've, they don't have to have licensed staff or they don't have to, so I understand their reluctancy. But I did have a question about already too hard to start a business, like what, what now are the, other than sign permits, what are the it, there, it's current a general, permitting? It's a general feeling out there that you have to jump through too many hoops. For a sign use. permit? I mean, that's all I For had to any do. Business, in any business, any business. These are, these are the, now you gotta remember who was in the audience. I mean, these were real realtors who are dealing with commercial businesses, probably usually a little on right. the bigger and side. And they're licensed through DORA. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but they also have to, they, they don't, how do I want to put this? They're missing an ombudsman, I guess. They're, they're bringing developers in. Developers are interested in working. Developers have to go through all of these hoops. And there is, there is talk, and we still hear it every now and then, about the city says, you got to do this. And then you do it, and then the city says, no, now you got to do this. Well, the, what, do what, this. Is that, what specifically is that example? Well, I, I don't think it's anything that, that, I, that I should really get into oh, okay. here. Um, but, but it's... I'm just a one was just very recent with with the uh, four mile parkway or four mile um, yeah the project out at four mile that was one of them and there are there are different reasons for that those types of hoops some of the some of the fact some of it is the the fact that there are hoops that experienced developers are familiar with and and, and, and inexperienced developers are not or inex you know inexperienced 
architects maybe not may not be familiar with something, but that turns into the public discourse of being hoops that yeah. everybody has to go through. And until the messaging out there changes somehow, um, ever so slowly, which it is ever so slowly, and I'm that's one of my that's why we have this economic development roundtable, partially. Right, um, and, and I totally agree. We need something, but what? Um, I'm right there in the same conundrum uh, with the economic development department. Yeah. I mean, what do we do? Do we need something? Do we not? Uh, I don't really know the right answer, so I'm not taking one side or the other. I'm just trying to be realistic in the fact that everywhere you go, you either have to have a license or a permit. doesn't matter if you're in Canyon City or Denver or Florence. It's, it's just the way business works. And quite honestly, I believe that if the council decides they want to do that, that's how it's going to be in Canyon City. It's just the way it works, you know. Um, you know, the people will go back to the rec center. We were talking about the rec center before. Um, everybody was in favor of it. Everybody was talking very positively in favor of it, you know, all the positive talk out there until it came to vote. And then the ones who were not in favor of it um, voted, you know. Everybody that's not in favor of this is going to come out to talk about it right. until and, it's done. And, it, and that's yeah. the same thing. The people, who, exactly, the people who didn't want the rec center, we talked amongst people and almost everybody we talked to, there was a few that didn't want it, just a few. But, um, but that's going to be the same way with this. Yeah. And, and as a business, former business owner, and probably a new business owner here very, very soon, you know, I come to, from the thing that says, hey, I have no problem registering my business, letting the police department know, the fire department go. Um, as far as a fee, I think it, there, there should be a, a fee for business, but I think it should be very minimal, especially in a city that's already higher tax rate compared to other cities within the state. You know, and that, that's just my opinion on it. Do I think there needs to be something? Yes. But I think as far as our fees go for it, it needs to be way on the lower end of it. Just. We you have to so look at the fees. I'm That's, sorry, but oh, Andrea Stein has had her name up for a little while now. As a journalist over the years, I have had um, in Ohio, Georgia, and now in Colorado, I have had a lot of contact with cities. And um, business licenses are the norm. They're not something that's like out there, it's something new and wild and different. Um, and I think as a city, we need to think about making this, uh, making it something that's of value to a new business. They need, to mm. know, they need to know who the other businesses are. You probably, with your businesses, you'd like to market to other people, businesses who are in town. And I know you would, Brandon. Um, and so maybe make it that, you know, it's your, if you're part of, a, you know, the business licensing, process, then you might have access to maybe the list. That's, that's something that you might want to, I don't know what the confidentiality would be in that, but if someone is a public business, why not? And then the, the argument about how we could be punitive, like with mask ordinances and that sort of thing, those don't, I mean, we could, we could do all kinds of ordinances that have nothing to do with business licenses, those are two separate things. Um, and, and I think people need to get involved and interested in what we as a council do. And they have to come here and let us know what they're thinking. Otherwise, we're just, you know, we're looking at an empty room most nights. And um, that's, it's really frustrating. And, and I've spent a lot of time reaching out to people to see what do they really think? What do they really want? I, t I know what I think and what I want, but that's, I don't represent, uh, you know, a couple thousand people that think the way I do. That's not, I, that's not, and I realize that. But I think the whole business license thing, it's not an outlier. And it's something that, that's, um, it's a benefit to the city, but it's also a benefit to business owners. And if they could know, up, you know, up front, or maybe, you know, have some way of, getting the news out, say, on our website, when a new business comes and say, welcome, so-and-so, and, you know, this is where they're going to be, and this is what they're going to do. 
I mean, that would be a great promotional thing for them, yeah. I would think. Even when I try to deliver flowers, I'm trying to do it with the Chamber of Commerce Director, Rich Miller, to de deliver flowers to new businesses. Yeah. The only way I know is if I'm driving around town, I'm like, oh, hey, there's a sign up. I better put them on my list so we can. Right, <laughs> right. So, yeah, things, yeah. things like that, we just, we need to be. I mean, remember the old welcome wagon? I don't even know if they have they those have, anymore. They have, they have something like that They still have the chamber. something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, and it's. But even they don't know. And Who's maybe new? for the first year or two, maybe for the first year, the license is free. And then if you want to, re when you renew it, there's a charge. Because there's so many expenses when you're starting a business. How about that? That's something to think about. That's something to think about. Um, um, and I mean, there's there's a lot of ways, but to think about maybe we could just think about what what value are we going to add so that business owners don't think it's it's an onerous burden to spend, say, fifty dollars or thirty dollars, whatever you know you you decide on. What what are the values? And maybe put together a little brochure. This is what you get being a business. Well, in. yeah, I, I I tend to look at everything from them mindset of messaging yeah so and, so, um, and yeah. I know personally, we've given out so many grant dollars to local <laughs> businesses from the city of Canyon City in the past two years now that you're registered <laughs> but there is an opportunity yeah, but, but then they'll be knocking on the door can yeah. I have my grant but there we can't lose sight of the fact that there is a cost to us of doing business to put these licenses out and and you know Got to cover your time fees. and the people and because it's it's a huge and I would recommend if you do business licenses just do it like they do with license plates don't print that stupid thing out every year right Cindy Amen. put put little <laughs> stickers on yeah um, when I worked with Dylan they finally got to that point it was like oh my gosh it just took you know weeks of work to get those out you know every year and maybe think about instead of every year every two years you know that would that would be a, a cost savings for people too i think i've been thinking about it in terms of the the language that was in the ordinance that ordinance that we got i think last october or last december which was very heavy-handed very mm -hmm. punitive and i think that there's a really big difference between kind of that sort of license and a business registration where it really is a couple of simple check the boxes here's a here's 25 bucks and it doesn't have anything to do with the city is not saying yes you are allowed to have this kind of business here or no you're not it's essentially like almost registering a dog like i have a business and and you guys are signing off on it um i will say i think it's really important that we take a really hard look at that uh, about the feedback that we got during that listening session because we had a number of business owners come in and provide their feedback and it was overwhelmingly negative and I think there are likely ways that we can completely revise the original draft ordinance to take all of that into account but I think we definitely do want to be mindful of the fact that we want to be a pro business friendly city and we certainly don't want to be setting up additional hoops and things that will make it more complicated for businesses to want to come here and to want to get started here so I really do hope if you guys are going to be taking another stab at, at drafting this that it looks markedly different and really does yeah. reflect all this of that. I was hoping feedback. to see today. Well, and the other thing about the mandates that I just wanted to throw in quickly is we don't have a city health department. So those <sighs> mandates came down from county no, or state and we are the lowest rung on the ladder. <laughs> and I just want to make that, sh that clear because I cannot tell you the conversations that I had with the public about this is not coming from city. This is this we are at the bottom of the pole. And, I, and, I, sh and I, I alluded to it before, but I should add that the person that said that said, I don't believe this will ever happen with this administration, but in the future, there's always that possibility that something could be tied to a license. Um, so it was, it was a, I don't, I don't want to say he was grasping at straws, but he was. It, well, he there's was, he endless was, what ifs. The endless what conjured. ifs, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in, in regardless of if, if this, <clears throat> passes or not, I mean, 50% of the community is going to hate it, and the other 50% are going to love it. So it's... I know, it just kind of reminds me of when we changed an ordinance that you couldn't have those really big dumpsters on a <laughs> sidewalk, in the middle of a sidewalk. You I actually was just had thinking to have about that yesterday, On actually. the side of your house. <laughs> what? This is overhanded. This is, I mean, all the same arguments were about that. And then we're like, I'm sorry, but it's time to take some steps so people can use the sidewalk. 
and that we helped make Kansas City look a little nicer, and we passed it, and there's been almost, I mean, very few incidents. Ever since. I said, okay, fine, we'll put our dumpster to the side of the house, and it hasn't been as big a deal. Um, Ryan Stevens, did you still yeah. have some? Yeah, I just, I wanted to go back to the volunteer aspect of it. So it sounds like we're heading in, in a, you know, a certain direction, but, you know, talking with Chief Del Vecchio at the fire district, um, you know, they have volunteer registration so people can let them know, um, you know, their contact information for emergencies and things like that. And oftentimes that information is outdated two to three owners previously. So relying on that voluntary um, network or, you know, registration, um, I would I would recommend against it's that. almost useless yeah. at that no. point yeah. yeah 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 even when we did that sorry even when we did that at the PD we had um, volunteers go out and tr they went door I mean door to door and to get people to fill out the paperwork and get it back to us it, it was almost impossible we probably got maybe maybe half and that was over weeks with multiple volunteers out trying to do that and it was very, I mean, they were frustrated, like, we, we're standing there, it's an easy form, it just has their name and address, and they just like, we'll get to it later, we'll get it back to you, and they would never turn it in, so. Mayor Smith, uh, Catherine has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Catherine. <laughs> um, good evening, so I just wanna, I, I think the part of the reason why you didn't get a new draft of the ordinance is because we need to know whether you want this to be a mandatory system or not. It's not mandatory and it's volunteer. We don't need an ordinance. You can just have a program. And so that's why we didn't want to make any additional changes because we really needed that fundamental direction from you. Um, on, on the issue of enforcement, uh, you know, if you, you have to have those enforcement provisions or it's just, it's not meaningful at all if that's what you really want. That's a policy decision whether to have a mandatory program or not. But the enforcement provisions are no different than any other enforcement provisions in the code anywhere. And they're not special for business licenses. There's nothing going on there. And those enforcement provisions are there for certain businesses now. Um, we may not take enforcement, but they are there. So I just wanna make sure we understand, like when we close this meeting out, we get good direction on where we wanna go. Um, and we can bring back, you know, different versions of language for defining business and engaging in business and we, you know, flesh through it and figure out what is works for Canyon. That's not an issue, but I think the fundamental question is, do you want it to be mandatory? Council Member Schmisher. Um, I was just thinking it might be helpful if Rick um, went back a couple of slides, because I think that there is still a pretty big difference between mandatory with enforcement of a simple business registration that's 25 bucks, do you have the registration, do you not, versus what is currently in the draft, which is, like guilty of a misdemeanor. Um, and before that, there's also uh, cease and desist. And before that, there's also suspensions for cause. But cause is pretty broad, and it's a very long ordinance. Um, and it's a, a really detailed and seems like it's written in a very punitive fashion. I just feel like there's a really big difference between something like this that was in the first draft, and even if you wanted to make mandatory a simple business registration, that's just a did you register, did you not, as opposed to um, many pages of, of this kind of legalese. Well, if I can answer that question. So first of all, that ordinance was a complete right, rewrite of an entire title of the code that was beyond just businesses uh, licensing. And that's why it was large, but you guys like to see the red lines, and that's why it was large. So I think the other issue is, if you, these are very standard enforcement provisions across the board. I mean, I can, Florence has these provisions in their code. Um, and so the, the four cause is simply, do you have a license or not? That's, you know, it, that's it. It's a totally objective standard. There's no subjective standard. You either have a license or you don't. Um, this isn't about, you know, are you zoned in the right place? This is about whether or not you have the license. So it's, it's, Enforcement of business licensing is pretty straightforward. Um, Councilmember Smith, I, I just wanted to refer back, I, I, and I might need your expertise here. Um, there was a situation with um, some residential Main Street being on the ground floor, and then there was the building boarded up, and mm -hmm. uh, there was all these issues. And 
I just I feel like if there was a license in that situation, it would have been a lot more streamlined to solve that problem. Well, to have the consi and part of that problem was that w there wasn't consistency. There were some people that like, hey, we noticed you have a residential apartment that's getting street access from the very front of Main Street, you know, where that needs to be commercial. So we, we saw, we noticed that, and so we were enforcing it. But then like, well, there's so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so who are doing it. And so there's no ability for that consistency that was needed. So everything was re treated equally and fair among all. But yeah, I think the communication piece is really big that for us to be more business friendly, we need to be able to have effective communication. Um, and, and where I was going with that was at one point when my business was on 4th Street and not Main Street, we had a business come in next door. Um, it was a thrift shop. I mean, it was a yard sale basically on a daily basis. It was, it, it was I mean, it definitely lowered my business's um, value per se because there's all this junk on the side of the street, you know, and, and I, I just don't, that, that's what we see a lot of sometimes. You sign a lease with an inexpensive um, unit and then you're there to, for three months, two months, and then you're gone. And um, no sign permitting, no nothing. And, and I mean, this happens all the time, right? I mean, I see businesses one day and the next day they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we only have a few minutes left to this meeting. We need to give you the direction uh, from what, and please council chip in, but it seems like the overall conversation has been keep it simple, keep it about communication, about the ability to be an ombudsman and public safety and those goals and that there's a value to this and keep the, the, um, the fee low. And I think we had mentioned that for the very first business license that it, or slash registration, although I know Florence's does specifically say license. I don't know if it matters one way or another. The f for all those who register by their existing business by a certain date, get it for free. They're grandfathered in. They just need to have it submitted. And so I think that is definitely a, a, a help to that conversation. Anything else you want to add to give that direction? I agree totally with, with that. I mean, that's really okay. basically what to do. We need to decide whether we want it mandatory or not. Oh, right. I think that's what she, or what she was saying. Catherine was wanting. Catherine wanted. It, well, that's, that's, a, that's a core decision. Do we, if we just want it to be voluntary, Or do we want it to be mandatory? Because that's gonna, that's, you know, she's gonna have to decide. It sounds like there's been a couple of different attempts at voluntary. Yes. Yeah. That's what he's trying to tell you. So, Amy, did, I saw you, you had your. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm comfortable getting another version of this that kind of meets what the mayor said, but I would still want another round of business owner input to, to get their reactions to that simplified version to see if it really does meet that, that mark and really does incorporate their input. Because as it's currently written and where it currently is, I'm, I'm still opposed to it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So as far as the mandatory part, do you just want to go down and have you see what you think? I, I agree with mandatory. I agree with mandatory, but I think we need to go back and do some rewriting, and, and I agree with this too. There's just some things that, as, as a former business owner, that I'm like, ugh, I'm not yet, not yet. Andrea? Um, I think that if it's not mandatory, it's gonna be useless and a waste of our time. So I, I think it should be mandatory, and you know, we're gonna have to listen to what Catherine says about how it has to be worded. So, um, but no, if it's not mandatory, it's not gonna meet our needs. Amy? I, I'm still leaning towards no entirely. Um, so I would say no on the mandatory front, but I'm happy to see another version of it. Thanks. I think, uh, like that we've been trying for several years now for the voluntary and reaching out and as husband and you hear any rumors of a new business, I, you know, immediately introduced to Rick. <laughs> And it's just not going far enough to accomplishing what we need to. Um, I, from a, as from far as the Osbuzman's yeah. part, but 
most importantly for the public, the public safety part is the probably biggest, and then the communication piece. Because we, I mean, Rick was there too when it was COVID-19 and all those businesses were closed, and we were trying to call them, we were trying to message mm -hmm. them, but they were they weren't at their business answering the phone because they had to be at home, and we had no way to reach them to say we have grant money, we have masks for you, we have. You know all you know the sanitation that you need so you can open up your business again and we have access for ppp if you need help we did not we the communication was a major barrier and then afterwards after we went above and beyond every way we possible could to reach out to them at the end of the day they're like well why didn't you contact me yeah. where was the communication from the city we like, called 400 and some businesses they, I mean, we and they're you. all closed <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard and frustrating, and this would really help us to become more business friendly. And we need to have a robust list and a robust opportunity to be able to do that. All right, I think we need to adjourn.